Okay, collective, this is a juicy one, okay? Because we're talking about financial discipline. We're talking about moderation in a relationship when it comes to finances. This also refers to overgiving in relationships. So finances here, and we're going to dig in because I'm excited about what's going to come out with this energy. I'm fucking excited. But I'm really interested in the, the, the um, variations of um material abundance that's going to come through and how we're going to link in um moderation doing things in moderation spending in moderation giving in moderation receiving in moderation as well we don't talk enough about receiving in moderation because certain people love to receive you greedy greedy motherfuckers out there love a love a love a love a love a receive but they don't know how to give so we're going to look at that yeah and then you've got to be careful as well sometimes collective because if you are so quick to just get into a situation where you're giving, 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 and someone you're with just loves to receive, oh, you can get in the dirtiest cycle of just always being the um, giver, never receiving anything back. And then you realise why your life is the way it is, or your coin is the way it is. You're like, hold on, how's my life set up like this? How, how am I in this situation? Oh, shit, because I decided to be the giver. Haven't received in a decade. Shit. It's not cute. And that links into love partnerships because that's also the card coming out here as well, okay? Let me tell you what months we're looking at here. We have got eight. So we're looking at August. So if you're August baby, there's resonance here for you today. We're also looking at 222. Two, two. So February significant as well. And then we're also looking at May, yeah? So if your birthday's in May, February, or August, extra significance in the story for you today, okay, guys? And we're going to dive in straight away. I'm going to pull a tarot first, which isn't normally what I do. But let's get some grounding then, considering it is about finance, yeah? First card coming out was the finance, wasn't it? Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. This is deep. I wasn't expecting us to go here. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Your life's changing tremendously. This is humongous, yeah? Wow. Hit the like as well, please, guys. Do subscribe if you're resonating, okay? Because this is about to go down. Hit me in the comments if you need to affirm this reality as well as yours, yeah? Confirmation is real by hitting me in the comments saying, yep, yeah, that's me. My life is indeed changing. I am looking at financial abundance. Different. Now, because the financial discipline card has come out, and then we've got ten of pentacles, ten of cups coming out with that. Now, if Ten of Pentacles came out, I would say that's an absolute mirror in vibration. We're looking at financial discipline and Ten of Pentacles. That's Earth energy. But then to come out with the Ten of Cups, especially in the deck that I'm using, whoa, it turns the whole story on its head. Because it's letting me know that manifestations are in flight. Things are manifesting at this time for you in your life. This is a humongous step in the right direction. Not even a step, you're living in the now. You're living in the now moment. Law of attraction is in action. You really are doing this thing, right? Now, there's a relationship style, a relationship that's going on in the now moment or an ex still close by that you need to really transmute now. You need to let this go now. Yeah? Whatever it is. You thought you were going to be with this person. You've been dreaming about this person, manifesting this person. You've been dating this person for ages. They won't commit. You've been spending all your money, sending someone all these gifts. They're not loving you in the right way. They're not reciprocating. You're trying so hard in a relationship with someone else. You're believing that you're meant to be with someone else or you're still crying over your ex. That needs to end today. Whoever I'm connecting with, yeah, we're going to end that shit today, yeah? That's why you're here. That's for that side of the collective. Because when I look at the coin and I look at the financial discipline and I look at the level up in your life, God's going, yeah, this can't run anymore. This low vibration of um, this kind of relationship here, this old way of giving and receiving in relationships, it's got a goal, it's got a goal, goal. We can't have any of it around. It's so 
demeaning and more demoralizing for you this is for someone who keeps going back to a cheater yeah or you keep dating guys that cheat on you right like you set standards in relationships right oh, i don't want to talk about me but this is what i do i'm a developmentalist so i have to share some of my experience but cringe yeah in my life i will only go for a certain type of guys over and over again because it was easy and i know that they would want me i'm embarrassed to say it but here we go i'm telling you so you can all benefit from my embarrassing life great yeah <laughs> I'm sulking over here through the other end of the screen. Damn it. I have to admit that I have been dating dicks. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to go for a certain kind of guy, a certain kind of caliber. I know how to handle that kind of guy. That kind of guy eats out the palm of my hand. Yes, come over here, darling. When I see you in the club, when I see you at the bar, when I see you on the street, you're mine because I know how to handle you. But when you're challenged with a new vibration in love, a new vibration in romance, it really does make you have to level up. And you can level up in all areas of your life. Financially, you've leveled up. I see that. Mentally, spiritually, qualification-wise, experience-wise, you've leveled up. Your skill set is leveled up. Your skills have leveled up. Your finances have leveled up. But your relationship's still that same dusty kind of um, energy you've been picking up for the last decade. Oh, how embarrassing. I, I resonate. I'm so, guys, I'm so sorry. If you're in a relationship, maybe you want to click off because I'm going to hurt your feelings. I know it. And oh, some of you, oh, I feel guilty now. Listen up, right? Oh, here we go where the backlash will eventually begin. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, this is cool for me to say all of this stuff if you're not in a relationship officially and you're just dating and it's casual but if you're in a relationship and and the divine's telling me straight up yes yeah, some of this is for people who have been in a relationship for like 10 years your relationship's dead dead and dusted dead in the water you ain't been happy in ages you ain't had decent sex in ages you're doing the same things every day ticking the same boxes plodding along you're unsatisfied you're not happy yeah if this ain't you click off now i don't need you in my comments chatting doo doo Saying, that's not me. I am in love and I've always been in love with my man. Well, do you know what? Well done you. Go and spend time with your man then and stop and instead of watching tarot. How about that? <laughs> because if that was true, if that was true, maybe you wouldn't be here. You'll be out with your man. Yeah? So, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry, but I can't help but be real. That's who I am. The mouth opens and the truth flies out of it. Anyone I'm connecting with today, you've gonna, we're all gonna have to take a minute. We're gonna go in with the cards. Fuck it. Let's ask the cards about this. We need to look at the relationship side of stuff because everyone connecting, including me, I'm not immune from this abuse, guys. I'm not immune. I'm sitting in this energy with you. I resonate. Every kind of person that I've been choosing to pick up, anyone connecting with this, we've been dating people of a specific kind of caliber because we know how to date a person from that specific kind of caliber, whether that's a social group, a pay bracket, even a race. Some of you guys won't branch out and date other races because you've been gr grown up in a family where all your family just stick with the same race. You've been approached by someone else or a friend for, who has a different race or religion. And you just won't go there because you don't know how, how would my religion and your religion go? Because actually one of us will have to convert. Like, and you don't even want to have those conversations or those thoughts. But there's actual love there. All of you lot blocking yourself from love because you don't want to move to that race. You don't want to move to that religion. You don't want to move to that pay bracket. You don't want to change your, your, the, the style. Yeah? Well, you, you're, used to, you're used to dating guys that wear baggy um, pants, trousers hanging down to their arse. Yeah? With a spliff in their mouth. Right? Suddenly now, you're switching up the game. Trying to date someone who's in a, from a total different um, field. Wearing suits and bow ties and God knows what else, you know? That's the point here. And all, all of you are not in the same situation as me dating, dating guys from the hood. So that was my example of that. But whatever it is for you, and male or female, take it as it resonates. You're dating a specific kind of guy. Some of you guys only dating um, CEOs and um, people that are working in banks. And um, this guy, he's working for this Fortune 500 company. He does this, he does that. He, like All of these kind of characters, I only date guys from here. Well, what if, what if your true spouse is over there, to the left or to the right or in the middle? 
you, you haven't you haven't equated for that because you assume that you're meant to be dating someone from this kind of lifestyle because you're comfortable and aware of how that social circle functions how people in that ecosystem behave you feel more aligned to that ecosystem you feel like you fit in more over there or you or someone from that sector would compliment you a lot more than if you were to go with someone else from that sector or that sector or that industry but people are not their clothes people are not their skin color people are not their race or religion people are not their pay packets so you've got to break away and you've got to understand that love can be found anywhere Love can be found absolutely anywhere. And actually, more, more time, you don't even have to look for it. Nothing worse than not looking for love and it's slapping you in the face and you're like, what the fuck are you doing here? No one invited you around, love. Didn't want a bit of love right now. I'm busy. Yeah, I'm building my own career and you're trying to put love in front of my fucking face. Get out of here. I'll rather go back to the hood <laughs> and get one of, one of my guys from the hood who I know how to deal with right that's just an example but we're gonna go in take it as it resonates i want to look in specifically at the loving situation for you guys okay oh okay could be dealing with a leo here leo's the first sign that's come out so far then we've got a pisces pisces is screaming for attention today pisces you're gonna have a reading next if you're looking in because um i've done the same for virgo aquarius is also here aries is also here and there we go we're gonna pause and i'm gonna go in with this story now yeah so straight away i'm looking at a really really strong character who has um oh there's a love story here listen to this yeah we're gonna get into the finance and the moderation but let me run this story real quick because it's for someone and it's something so let me know if you resonate and what parts of this you do and don't resonate with we're not gonna be long though right so straight away i'm looking at a fiery strong person and i'm looking at this beautiful emotional person that balances you out yeah now this person sees you yeah They've seen you from a distance. They've seen you from a really, really long time, yeah? Or it could be someone that you work with. So it could be someone in your line of work, um, career-related, in your neighbourhood, from your neck of the woods, whatever it is, yeah? There's someone that's around you. When I say around you, I feel like that's wrong as well. Because they're not around you. They're on the other side of the pond. So even from um, a different state, a different um, part of the world, right? But the truth of the matter is they're at a distance from you. But they, sit, they, they light a fire under your ass. The love that you have with this person, sometimes you might not even be able to believe it. You may have ran from this as well. Yeah, could have been a holiday romance. You could have met each other abroad. I'm looking at really, really, really a deep love. Oh, okay, stay with me here, okay? Shit, man. Oh, it's all going on. Some of you need to cut cords. Some of you need to cut cords real bad, yeah? Let me tell you why. Because this, this reading's flipping back and forth in, in a mirror in vibration. Some of you guys, for example, you are holding on to a holiday romance that you had years ago. And you've got into the energy of... Um, I may end up with this man, I may end up with this woman, I know what we had was meant to be, and you still talk on the phone, you still do this and that, and there's this part of you that always felt like you would end up with this person, you're not meant to be with this person, yeah, so for any of you thinking I was about to tell you that that person from across the pond is for you, that's not for you, if this is a holiday romance kind of vibe that you met on holiday, and you had a little something, or you ran away together, you had a little dirty weekend, a quick getaway, you had a little saucy nights here and there, little weekends here and there, I'm not talking about him or her. I'm talking about someone who is in the background. They haven't even approached you yet. They haven't even come in and taken your hand. Whoever I'm talking to is a very chivalrous masculine, I get, yeah? I also, I say that, but then I also get um, feminine energy. So I could be talking about same sex. I could be talking about a stud. But either way, I'm talking about someone who has this really, really sexy, well-dressed, well put together energy they're put there they're, they're really really strong and independent they're taking a back seat they're not in your face whatsoever uh, i want to say you don't know them but i feel like that would be a lie because i feel like you do yeah 
Either way, they're watching you from a distance, yeah? They've long been watching you from a distance. They've got an eye on you. They've long had an eye on you. Now, they may just have an eye on you because you're in the same industry, you do the same kind of work, you're friends for years, or they know you for a friend of a friend, they follow you on social media and they like your posts. Whatever it is, it's a laid-back dynamic. But the truth of the matter is, there is a deeper-rooted connection here, but everything is turned on its head. Because I see, like, um, you and this other energy in a ping ball, in a ping ball machine, in a pinball machine, being bounced around up and down all over the place, falling into different holes, sliding all up and down in this machine. That's what's going on in this relationship. Instead of the karmic energy being able to be cleared out and thawed away, it's ping, 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 ping. You're bouncing off other energies other people involved, other thought forms, other thoughts and feelings, other areas of your life that had to take priority. Now, when I say that, that brings in the finances, didn't it? Because this was meant to be about finance. So let's go here. This is about the moderation as well. In this connection, there has been no moderation because things have been up, down, left, right, here, there. This could be someone who's a jet setter, someone who flies, flies around a lot, flies around... Um, the world, right? Spends a lot of time in travel. Travelling to different states, travelling to different places around the world. You could be a midwife here as well, I get. Because I'm looking at you deal with a lot of people each day. I'm seeing patients, yeah? But I'm looking at a pregnant woman holding her stomach, right? You could even do, like, um, surrogacy, artificial... Like, I get artificial insemination, stuff like that. So even... For some, like, this is a weird scenario, but take it as it resonates, right? Because this is quite extreme. But it's like, imagine you're a single woman, yeah? But you're a surrogate. And you just choose to be a surrogate for other people. How the fuck are you going to get a relationship going on? Well, every time you meet someone, you're pregnant. It's not your kids. And you're like, do you know what? I've got two more sur surrogacies booked in after this. I've got another one next year. And then the year after that, I'm going to be a surrogate again. And then this guy totally into you loves you to pieces wants to be with you but it's like um do you want to have kids are you gonna have kids am i allowed to have sex with you while you're carrying these other people's kids are they rules? like it's messy do you get what i mean it's it's like it's like there's no wrong thing that you've done there's no wrong thing that they they've done provided it's not this x energy that we've got to let go of if any of you are believing in someone right now this is so fucking rude but in my head, I want to go, stop believing in this arsehole. If they've shown you once, twice, three times, get them out. You're out of here. That's what we call a strike. Strike one, strike two, strike three. You're out of here. That's how it works in real life. Play the game, bitches. Come on. Life's a game. Tally it up, boo. One, two, three. Un, dos, tres out of here if you've given this person three chances close the fucking case it's done we've seen enough we've heard enough people don't change overnight believe me i know i've tried <laughs> i've tried to change people and i've tried to change myself for years and years and years and years and years we are not meant to change inherently we are here to evolve, not change, evolve. There's a real difference between us evolving, developing, growing, yeah? You see, like, I'm born a female human and every single day I get taller, well, until I reach that growth rate and I've stopped, but do you get what I mean? Since birth, I've grown, yeah? Everything about me has grown, my bones have grown. I've developed, my skin colour stay the same. My, my, legally my name stayed the same we can change a lot of different stuff but inherently let's be real we stay the same suddenly i'm not gonna wake up and be a lion not in this lifetime so if we're going that's the point this is the best point i can give you guys about this releasing energy you've got to release this idea that one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be a lion i'm so sorry to break your heart i really don't want to break your heart i'm, I'm so sorry but I assume that I'm talking to a human at the other end of this screen, right? So if that is the case, you ain't going to wake up any time soon and be a lion. Or a giraffe. Or a kangaroo. Or a caterpillar. 
Metaphorically, we can talk about them all day, but in reality, you are going to maintain this human form. So you can't suddenly expect your ex, your friend, your lover, any relationship around you that since the start of time has taken a very specific form, you've been fucking this person for four years straight. They said they don't want to commit. But what if, what if they want to commit tomorrow? What, when I say I'm not going to sleep with them anymore, suddenly they're going to want to commit then. They ain't committed in four years. Just call it, call it, call it. No one wants to call it over here. Come on, guys. Because the more you choose not to call it, the more you're leaving this energy open to be ravished and rampaged. Like rampage. What's the word? What is the word? It's a rampage, I think. But there's another word for it. The right... Um, what's the word? I don't know. You know what I mean, but you don't know what I mean. <laughs> you let it, do not allow your dreams and visions and true thoughts and feelings to just be ravaged by this unrelenting need to just not give up. You sometimes giving up is the best thing you can do for yourself. That sounds awful, doesn't it? Let me let me clear that up. But I'm going to stay with him because I love him. I know he's cheated on me four times already, but I love him. I know if I stay with him and I keep on believing that one day he, he will just be faithful, then he will. What, what does that say about your morals and integrity then? What does it say about your, your belief system of self? Yeah? And when does loving someone become more important than looking the truth dead on in the face and saying, actually, I, that's not okay. Love versus standards, that's important, isn't it? When do you realise, Jayden, these guys is not going to do it for me. I'm incredibly smart and intelligent and wise and I would rather date someone who is not in that kind of standing, who does not read books in their free time. They rather go out and um, live a criminal lifestyle, right? L hang out on the block with the man then. That used to be me back in the day. When did it get to the point in my mind that I thought, actually, I deserve more than this? I'm not going to continue to date gangbangers, as, as, as appealing as it may have been for me in my younger days. But what have I got to do? Grow up. Do you get what I mean? We all have to grow up and state, state the obvious, see the obvious. That's not going to work for me. If I want to get somewhere in my career, if I truly want to know love, if I want to level up and be more in a, financial, in a better place financially, I have to have discipline. And that discipline, sometimes it takes all the love off the table. It takes all the, it takes all the free will off the table, yeah? Because there's two levels of free will. There's two layers to free will. Let's say that. The first layer to free will is what you want in the now moment, immediate gratification in the 3D, by your 3D vessel. I want a takeaway, I want um, a new TV, I want to go out with this person, I want to have sex with that person, I want to buy that outfit, I want to go to that club, I want to enrol at that school, I want to uh, purchase that guitar. That's layer one layer two is your higher self your higher self knows the right thing to do if i get that guitar this is the financial discipline that we all should be relating to in this reading today layer two i know that i'm gonna play that guitar one time this year that it's gonna go in the cupboard and i'm not gonna see it again it's going to cost me two and a half grand. I'm not going to pay for lessons because I've got no interest in listening to someone else teach me how to play the guitar. I just want to act like a rock star for 10 minutes every now and then. So actually, that's not the smartest investment. My higher self knows that. And actually, when I give myself to my higher self, the free will of my ego, my lower self, my layer one version of me, I'm best off just, just taking the free will away from layer one. And, and giving all the controls to my higher self, my layer two. Because in that now moment, 
I can trust that what I'm doing is going to benefit me for the long run. Because once again, that higher self is going for that long-term gratification. That long-term sustainability. Well, that lower self is seeking immediate gratification. Short-term wins. You can live in the short term all you want. It's like the people that like, oh, why should I save for a rainy day? I might not be here when it rains. Well, okay, fair enough. Well, do you know what? Do you want me to start hoping that you're not here when it rains? Because when it does start to fucking piss down raining, um, you're not even going to have an umbrella. So um, you let me know. You let me know. Should I, should I pray for you not to make it to a rainy day? Yeah, is, is that the prayer that you want me to start initiating? That's Brahma right there saying, hey, you don't want to save for a rainy day. So you're giving all your time to your lower self, all your money and effort going into your lower self, when really your financial discipline comes from listening to your higher self and going, do you know what? That relationship won't serve me in the long run because actually I think I deserve someone who's not going to be in prison. Do you know, I actually want someone who's going to be around if I, I, I get pregnant. I actually want to date someone with standards who actually can actually afford to pay a bill, maybe. Yeah? How about that? That would be nice. Oh, I'm paying for the, the bill, am I? I'm paying the rent, am I? Oh, I'm paying everything, am I? Oh, okay. Maybe if we listen to our higher self a little bit more and have some discipline, not craving the gratification in the, the short-term gratification in the now moment we might actually manage to get someone who can pay a bill who can stick around for more than 10 seconds who cannot cheat because although maybe your mum is you your mum was cheated on your grandma was cheated on your aunties your uncles your uncles cheat your aunties have the dated cheaters it's fine it's destiny that's all that's all we do on our lineage we just date people that cheat it's normal for us it's, all, it's culturally correct is it Maybe if you listen to your higher self, you might wait, awaken to the truth of the matter is, th that the truth of the matter is, you are your greatest ancestor. And it is within you to break that lineage. Because time is but a mere illusion, and although we are here in the now moment, we are also everywhere else, across space and time, in the now moment as well. So if we collapse all timelines, we are our ancestors, and our ancestors are us. We've already lived this lifetime long before. So if that is the case, right, we should be here to break ancestral curses and not keep up the same patterns of behaviour that our ancestors, our, um, everyone else in our lineage, our family members have already acted out and failed. Learn from other people's failures is the point, yeah? So that was a massive rant today and I don't know if we got a moral. I don't know if, you know, if, if we found our way out of this conundrum. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. This is where we're going to leave it because I just I kind of asked the cards. So where do we go from here? How are we ending? How are we closing this out then? Have we have I made the necessary point? And what came out was the three of swords with the wheel, yeah, the the wheel of fortune, destiny. So what I'm getting in my head is, the message to take away today, guys, is we are all destined to be heartbroken. At some point of the cycle, that's painful to say out loud, yeah. But listen to me and don't feel like defeated, because I, I would. This is not the. This is not the point. Listen to the point, yeah. L look beyond the the the, the um, instant gratification of it, because I'm. What I'm saying is not exciting, is it? It doesn't gratify you, so it'll be easier to click off and turn away and avoid the context of the conversation. But if you stuck around and you listened to the end, you would hear the whole context of what I'm saying and understand how empowering and how important it is for your ascension. Do you get what I mean? Once again, it's about sticking it out. Because I've just said, in, in a really lower vibration, we are all destined to go through heartbreak. Anyone who doesn't even want to receive that low vibrational narrative and accept that that's reality to a certain degree is going to switch off. They're never going to hear the rest of what I have to say. But the truth of the matter is, the wheel of fortune is always spinning around and round. And sometimes you're at the top of the wheel. Sometimes you're at the bottom of the wheel. When you're at the bottom of the wheel, you're holding on for dear life. Because your whole body weight is now situated... The whole, the whole wheel of fortune is now situated on your whole body. And you're hoping and praying and wishing as quickly as it can the wheel can turn around so you're at the top again. Because when you're at the top, you're in the light, the sun, the highest vibration. 
but everything moves in ebbs and flows. Tell me that for the last 65 days of the year, you've had nothing but happiness. You've had nothing but joy. You've never cried. You've never broke a sweat. You've never shown tear, tears. You've never been regretful or shown remorse. You've never hurt in any way whatsoever. You ain't gone through any kind of heartbreak, any kind of heart chakra pain in the last 30, uh, 365 days. I call bullshit on that. I call bullshit on that. Tell, tell me, someone challenge me because I love a beef. I love a debate. I love war. Come for me, bro. Come at me, bro. Hit me in the comments. Let me know. Because I don't see anyone out there saying, I've been happy and in high vibes for 365 days of the year. And I don't know low vibration. No, we know it. We all know it. So, okay, what do we do then? We, we internalise that. We receive that. We acknowledge that. Because that is what is the moderation in life that we all need. Because the moderation comes from, from the lower vibration. The moderation comes from the higher vibration as well. Light and dark in moderation. That's what levels us up. That's what keeps us disciplined. That's what allows us to understand true wealth and abundance. That's how we should be managing our finances of all kinds. That's how we should be managing the loves in our life as well. With moderation, with understanding sometimes relationships are going to be shit. Sometimes they're going to be great. But today I've got onto all of you guys. Yeah, relationships are going to be positive and negative. Yes, yeah, certain people stay in relationships where they've been cheating on for years and they work it out and get back together. Kirk and Rashida, love and hip hop. They've been together like, what, 20 years now? And he's publicly cheated on her more times than anyone can tell. He's had babies on her and all sorts. It takes a very special kind of character to build resolve and resilience through all of that and feel destined to still be with that person. But just take a minute to think. What would your life look like? What, would, what could your life look like if you set at yourself a higher standard and you stuck to it and you were disciplined enough to uphold that standard that you set for yourself? Would your life reflect that or not? Because you can always choose a lower standard and your life will always reflect that. You know that. The life that you have now, you can continue to have by doing, by doing what you continue to do. But if you set yourself a standard... This is where we get weak. This is where it's easier to listen to the lower self than the higher self. Because if you listen to the lower self, oh, it's going to take too long to get to that reward. Oh, I'm not going to be fulfilled. Oh, that money's never going to come in. Oh, I'm never going to find that love. I'm never going to get what I want. Oh, I can just have this for now. Do you know, if I just let my standards down a little bit, I can get this person, I can get this job, I can get this career, I can get this money. Okay, that means you've gone off the beaten path. You've gone, you've gone off your destined path to go over here and get a quick buck, a quick fuck, a quick love, a quick level up. Yeah, it's fair and good. Most of, that's what most of us do. That's why, that's why we've got fucking monopoly. That's why the land is the way it is. Everyone's off the beaten track, doing what they can, getting what, getting what they can from where they can. It's the true disciples, the truly disciplined individuals that want the supreme, the utmost. And it's not for the weak hearted. It's not. So, is your heart strong or is your heart weak? If you could have anything in this lifetime, anything, all you had to do was set your standards and walk in that conviction. Actively do those things. Keep your morals aligned to those belief systems. Would you do it? Even if it took you 10 years. Or would you rather just go off to the beaten path and go along a different track for a little bit of instant gratification? And we're not saying you can't hop off the track now and then. And we, need, we all need a pit stop. We all need a pit stop. We all need to hop off and go for a little shot. We all need a vacay. We all need a break. We all need a little sexual fulfillment. A little, a little bit of fun here and there in whatever form it comes in. We all need to burst the bank a little bit now and then. 
to relieve the pressure when we are in those free those heartbreak free of swords energies but we shouldn't be staying on the path for years and years and years when we know it's not our destined path, when we're constantly gone through strike one, strike two, strike three, strike four, strike five, strike six, and we say, no, we're going to stick it out, we're going to stick it out. Because although everyone commends Rashida, for example, from the Love and Hip Hop example, they think, oh, well, good for her for sticking out and staying with her marriage for 20 years, even though he had another baby on her, even though he's been cheating on her publicly for how many years? Good for her. Look at them now, they're doing really well. Yeah, that's beautiful, I think. I think that's great. But I do also think, I wonder what your life would have been like, Rashida, if you took all your shit, packed up, left, went away. Wonder if your music career would have picked back up. Wonder if you would have found someone else who would have loved you and truly valued you for, at the worth that you would deserve to be valued at. But I guess we'll never know. And I guess we all have our free will in line with that liar and, higher and lower self. And in my opinion, we all have our own, own views of it, but in my opinion, she chose the lower self. Because it was too scary for her to go it on her own and move away entirely and not know what her future was going to look like without him by her side, who was her music manager as well. So it's easy, I'll stay with my manager, I'll stay with him, we all have kids together. The lower, the lower vibration is, I'll rather not take that calculated risk. I can't even calculate the risk in this situation. It's too risky for me. You, you, can, always, you can still win and be happy in the lower vibration. Yeah? Atheists exist. Yeah? Atheists are some of the happiest people on the fucking planet because they don't give a fuck about any constructs of what is real or, or illusion. It doesn't exist. So they ain't got to go through the back and forth dramas that all of our spiritualists do. Do you get what I mean? They live in cushy and free in the mind. But it is about your, your overall self-worth and desire to remove any limiting constructs out the way so you can truly just align so in what ways have you let your discipline slip in what areas of your life do you need more discipline and how will you go forward ensuring that you improve all of those lapses yeah and ask yourself more frequently guys i am i in the lower or am i in the higher and know that the low is fine and the high is also fine. The benefit is being aware, consciously aware of where you're at with it. Yeah, it's the knowing that's key, guys. It's the knowing. Yeah? Love and light collective. I'll be back soon with more. <laughs>